What's up guys, let's take a look at day three of Advent of Code called Mullet Over. We've got this program, this list of instructions, all thrown together, no space, no line break, or maybe if there are spaces or line breaks, they're just a red herring, it's all corrupted. And our job is to find all of these mull function calls where you've got the name and then some numbers with a comma in between. So the example has a bunch and there's some close where it's like a different kind of bracket or there's some that might seem to fail if it's got the do not but nope we're just looking for this phrase so if we're trying to find all of these phrases then I don't know about you but I'm gonna use a function called find all that's built into the RE module so let's say um, moles equals something and then we're going to return, well, let's do it first. Let's do it kind of in order. So from re import find all. And so we're going to go find all uh, with the pattern and then the thing that we're searching through. So we're looking for mole. And uh, to get digits, we go D. And then the amount, we go it's between 1 and 3. I think it's like inclusive at the top. It's not like a range, you know. Um, and then I want that again. And then this describes what I'm going for, but in regular expressions, most characters count as themselves, like M-U-L, that's just M-U-L. But a lot of characters have special properties. They have some active power, like parentheses. I don't want to count that as parentheses. I just want to count it as like the character. So I have to escape them with the slash, same for the D. I don't mean a D, I mean the digit thing. Um, and then here, and then here. And I think there's probably a prettier way to do that, but I'm not an expert in these, and I'm not doing any super long, complicated RE. This is, in fact, the only one I'm going to do today. Um, and we do the program, which is passed into the... Passed into the function is just a string. It's not like in other days where we break it up into lines and split and strip. It's just one blob. The example's small, the data is big, but don't worry about it, it's just a blob. So then let's print the moles to see what we're talking about and make sure that I actually did it right. Um, yeah, here we go. We have mol24, mol55, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know if, if you have the same I, but for me that looks like code. That looks like function calls. I want to do it. I don't want to like parse it more and, and extract the numbers. So while it's dangerous in a lot of cases, I'm going to use eval just for fun. So I'm going to go, okay, return sum map eval moles because we've got them. We're going to do it. Add them up. Bada bing, bada boom. So I'm going to go from operator import mull. Of course, I could just make it by saying, you know, mull is a times b, but why not? It's built in. We'll take it. And it's funny that it's grayed out because VS Code doesn't know that I'm using it because it's in the string and not the code. But anyway, let's try that. Hey, 161, was that the example? Um, yeah, it was because it's like the 2.4, the 5.5, the 11.8, and so on. So let's try it on the big data. Let's make sure... And 161, I wonder if that's a coincidence. I wonder if other people got the same first few digits with the millions. Um, or maybe that's just, I don't know. So anyway, it's a big thing. And that was part one. So let's look at part two. Part two says, hey, there's a state while we read through the program. There's like a do that turns on the moles. And there's a don't that turns off the moles. And so if we hit some in the don't mode, we're done. If we're in the don't state, even qualifying moles have no effect. So they give an example for this specifically that's different than the first one. And we say mole, yep, mole, almost, don't. And now we ignore this good mole and this almost good mole and this good one until we hit a do and then we start counting them again. So I think 
this is supposed to be a red herring, like they want us to try regular expressions and then get stuck, because maybe we look for like a do up until a don't, but then we forgot the beginning up until the first do. I'm not going to use regular expressions here. I'm just going to do regular Python methods like split because, you know what? It's simpler than it sounds, and it's just one line, I think. So here's what I'm planning. I'm going to go do's equals something, like the do blocks, like the strings in which we're active, our state is good. And then I'm going to return some map of part one onto the do's. So like every time I find a section that's good, that's like active, it's do, it's not don't, then I send that into part one, and then I add up all of the results of, you know, maybe I did 10 of those or something. So how do we get the do's? Well, I'm just going to go like program.split do, which is going to give me a bunch of chunks. And I want like everything up to a don't, you know what I mean? Like I want, if when I hit a don't, then everything after that doesn't matter, regardless of how many don'ts there are. So I'm going to go, um, you know, we'll call this like chunk or something, chunk dot partition don't, wait, I forgot the parentheses um, on this guy. Uh, for chunk and whatever. And so I could use split here, but I like partition when we're looking for one thing, one pivot point. Um, so what I mean is like, well, let's just do it. Let's just show you. So um, we'll print the do's and we'll do it for the example two, because if you try it on example one, I think you get nothing. Um, wait, I'm not actually running that function. Um, so we get like, hey, here's the first chunk, which was um, this thing, but then when we hit the don't, we ignore a couple, and then the last one is the eight five. Let's see the eight five. Yeah, beautiful. So. I think this is probably trying to trick us and trying to lead us down a path of something that would have been hard in a regular expression. Um, and my lack of confidence made me take the right path. So I was like, eh, I'm not even gonna try. Regular expressions are not something I'm super good at. Like I could do this one because it's just looking for a fairly small phrase that's pretty similar every time. But if we were looking for like up to the do's and then up to the don'ts, and then I don't know. So. Split and partition are more than enough to do this one. And let's try this on the big one. Hey, look at that, 820 something, which it's got to be less than part one, right? Because we're doing the same, except we're ignoring chunks when they're in the don't mode. And even though this is a big number, you can see that it's fewer digits um, than the, I wonder if it's like half the amount? Is it one less digit and it's 8 and 16? Maybe it's like half-ish. Um, so let's see if that was the answer. And yes, in fact, that was the answer. So there we go today. Uh, pretty short. We only had a couple lines of code. But remember, behind the scenes, there is a lot going on. When I do the find all, there's this complicated machine where it's going through and oh, we got to backtrack and do, 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 because we saw something that changed our state. So that's a good one. Nice and simple. I love the eval, even though it's very cheeky. Um, of course, if you didn't want to do that, you could just make a regular expression to capture these numbers. Or you could just say, like, you know, split on the comma and then strip off the mole parentheses and then int whatever's in the middle. There you go. But I thought it was nice. And there you go, day three.